Ooh, 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 today is a big day. Thursday, it's a big day. Um, no, there was just a player who was playing one of his preferred lines. It happened to be Mr. Slow. Yep. Nope, nope, nope. We don't talk about that. What's up? Hey, Mr. Coffee. Welcome to our moderator, Mr. Asturbate. Good to see you. It is a big day. Why is it a big day? Bought me an, an apartment. Not officially yet. Mr. Coffee subscribed to tier two. <clears throat> they have subscribed for 60 months. They. They being Mr. Coffee. Mr. Coffee is. Pronouns include he and them. He and they. Hmm. Happy five years. Oh my god. Five years? I've been doing this for like six years? Where did my life go? I must have earned like $500 streaming in the last five years. It's unbelievable. I'm never gonna sell out though. Don't worry. Okay, we've got our first game from Yabatis against Crystal KM. I've got a game from Uber Driver that's basically just for fun. We've got a game from Acerbate gifting five subs to the community. GP Bear, Seronche, NFDS1, Mickey Dicat, and Camelex. And I know that Mickey Dicat and Camelex and Seronche have all been here in the last couple of days. I don't know, does that mean they're in the house? Acer with five gift subs, thank you, sir. Sire. Sir. Soroche got the gift sub. Our backup moderator, emergency mod. But Soroche is so chill, you know. He's not a gun toting, you know, maniac like Mr. Coffee. Okay, that is awesome. Five gift subs. There's the hype train on the way already. Um, <clears throat> what's up? All right, I'm gonna get me a beer, Elizabeth. Payday and Thursday has its perks. Sire, Camelex, and Serenchi both here. Thank you for their gift subs. We're doing game analysis today. If you are a subscriber, or have become one in the last two minutes, you're entitled to submit a game to be analyzed here on the stream. We have currently at least seven games, and possibly more. I always forget someone. You want a fridge next to my computer too. How do you know I have a fridge next to my computer? How do you know that? Soronche. I think he asked Alexa or something. Um, yeah, it's very handy. It's from the poker days. When I played a lot of online poker, you gotta have like your supplies at hand. Um, no time to go down to the kitchen. But for streaming, it's obviously useful too. I was really hoping for the fridge microwave combo but they never really um, materialized. So, all right, we've got a game from Yabatis, Uber Driver, Astrobate, Sumaher, Thomas Trainson, welcome. Hey, it's Miro, and Pooh versus Turd. They Clara, what does that say? Clara, that's his new name. Clara. Uh, all right, yeah, I want a beer next to my glass. Don't they deliver langosh? Definitely, definitely. I've never ordered the langosh. For those of you that don't know, langosh are like, it's Hungarian fried dough. Served. Not not in the same way as American langosh. American fried dough is served with like powdered sugar and stuff. 
Hungarian langush is like savory. Savory langush. 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 Anyway, don't talk about langush. No food discussion. Beer is okay. Alright, we're gonna start with the Abadis game. I don't know if the Abadis is here. C4. Let me turn off this engine. C4. Yabat is facing, facing his own, um, one of his own demons, the English opening. Okay. Hype train, five gift subs. If you feel like donating, do it now, because we can get the hype train. If not, then not. Then just donate later. <laughs> C4B6. I like this move a lot. I play the English defense. Um... Donuts. L Langush is kind of like donuts. Um, is Langush worth it? Oh, well, there were people who were complaining like Langush was expensive at, at Lake Balaton in the summer. Like one Langush was like, I don't know, 2,000 forints, which is essentially five, no, that's five dollars is probably normal. It's good. You should definitely try it. It's weird if you're used to eating like fried dough American style where it's like with powdered sugar or something sweet because it's, it's usually with like cheese and and uh, sour cream. It's um, it's very heavy and it will make you like sick to your stomach if you eat too much in my experience. All right, anyway. C4, B6, Knight, C3, Bishop, B7, and then E4. And now Black played E6, but there's another interesting move here that I started I started playing um, last couple of years, which is E5. I never knew this was a thing. Um, but then I realized, hey, you know what this is? It's like a Schneider, B, you know, whatever, B3 Sicilian in reverse. So I tried that a couple times. I think I had a draw, maybe two draws with this variation. But I noticed a lot of good players had played it, so I don't know how Yabatis feels about it. Um, you could always play the Hippo or some kind of Double Fiend Keto, but that's not really that great. You can also play the symmetrical English, but B6 is kind of shaky. It's not really a perfect symmetrical English either. So E6 is like the correct move for black. After D4, we transpose to an English um, defense. But I, I think E5 is interesting. And really, like, maybe the most critical line is actually Knight F3, Knight C6, D4, which is like... Uh, it's basically like a scotch, sort of. It's really weird. I don't know, it feels like a scotch. Or langushes, langushes. I like to like mix Hungarian with, with English grammar. How many langushes did you eat today? Langushok. Uh, anyway, all right, E6 and then white plays d3. Now this is not a great move. To be honest, like white, white usually plays, I guess, g3, occasionally knight f3, uh, knight e2. Who played knight f3 against me? I lost to Ferenc Berkesh once. I feel like I lost to Ferenc once in this line, but I don't remember how it went. Maybe it was 92? I don't remember that. I don't remember how that went. In any case, this is a bad move. I mean, normally you play like g3, bishop g2, try to play a Bafinik. <clears throat> um, Jerry Hankin played g3 against me. I've had a number of games of G3. I, I beat Jerry, but that wasn't a big deal. He was old. Um, that's about it, I guess. 
I suppose like a3 is theoretically a move. Alright, so d3, that's lame. There's no real benefit to d3, it's not necessary. Now, interestingly here, most people played bishop b4. <clears throat> but I feel like black has a lot of options. I mean, pretty much anything here. c5, knight f6. Like, it's a floor bit again, it's reversed. I don't think this is a great move. We just go back to g8. You know, like, what the heck does d3 do? He wasted a tempo, so we can waste a tempo, too. Um, bishop b4, c5, and then, of course, the game move, which is very cool, d5. Played by Tom Brady. No, um... I, I feel like I saw this in a very similar position, played by Christian Bauer. But this is like a good version for black. So the, the big question is the light score bishop. If pawn takes pawn, pawn takes pawn, knight takes. Like, I mean, clearly you've got to take it with the bishop, or you're really sacking a pawn long term. I, I don't know, man. Ibadis isn't here. He's not here, but he argued with me that he didn't like um, Bishop B4 check. But I think this move makes a lot of sense strategically. Ibadis thinks much differently than me, but I think when you're facing the bishop pair, it's like usually good, a good thing to get rid of the, the bishop pair. And, I mean, honestly, here... Why does... Very many weaknesses on the dark squares. I'm not even in a hurry to get this pawn back on d5, to be honest. I think black's probably better. So, I was thinking about this. Keep in mind, wait as we remove like queen a4 check. You know, I could see how maybe some position like this, black might have some compensation for the sacrificed pawn. But I mean, clearly, bishop takes d5 is, is the main move. Um, anyways, I think white has no choice. He has to. He has to get at least the white square bishop. And he has some compensation for his stupid pawn structure. And the fact that his king is still in the middle of the board. Look at this Rosenthalus play with black. The guy was freaking 2600. It's got to be okay if Rosenthalus played it. The one thing that bothers me is like queen a4 check, but we can even trade queens. I mean, here, check. I I'm certain that black is fine after queen d7. But I suppose you could just play knight d7 and, and take your chances. White's pawn structure is so bad, black's probably okay, even with the white square weaknesses. White's position isn't so great either. Maybe there would be some problem here. I would feel safer trading queens. I'm not sure white should trade queens, but... Let's see what the engine says. Yeah, queen e4 check is, is a move. But not the best move according to the engine. It's up there, though. But maybe knight f6 is a mistake. Yeah, I agree, man. Bishop b4... No, this is definitely best. Check, bishop d2. You could play queen e7 check, I guess. But apparently bishop d2 check, queen takes, and then knight e7, covering the e-file. What did Rosenthalus play? That was a different position. Yeah, he didn't play bishop e4 check. Anyway. I agree with, I agree with myself that bishop e4 check is best. And the computer. I want to. I want to get my bad bishop out. So you bought us play knight f6, and our opponent played. Well, anyway, our opponent played something different. He did this. Knight e2. Now, what would you guys do in this position? I'm wondering about d4. Do you want to play? Do you want to play d4, queen a4 check, knight c6? 
I mean, is there some danger here for us? Like here, and the pawn is surrounded. Come out with your hands up. Style. Not clear, right? We have this. And then the knight on b5 is bishop f4. Pretty crazy situation, actually. I have no freaking idea what's happening here. Not crazy about this, to be honest. So d4 looks a little bit too much. Pawn takes pawn is nothing special. So we have to keep the tension. Plays this. This is okay. And look at that. You've got Sipke Ernst, Spike in some circles. Igor Genkin. Gherkin. That was my first dentist, Dr. Gherkin. That has to be a Russian name. Um, Arismendi Martinez from New Jersey. And Del Rio, Sabo Gergo, Weber Florian, Hertnik, Shabalov. Wow, there's a lot. I can't believe how many people got this position with white. Are you serious? And what's white thinking here? What are these guys thinking with white? They're just not thinking. I think white is worse already. Shipo Shishvan actually won, won a game. Moisienko lost. But I think black is definitely better. This is so lame for white. So everyone, everyone, everyone played e5. You have to. What about knight to g4? That drops a piece? No, it doesn't. It doesn't drop a piece, it's just like a bad position for the knight after d4. This knight is kind of sus. Um, but here's where it gets interesting. Obviously this is a Pavel Blatny favorite. You know, you can, you can play like bishop e7, knight f8, knight e6. Um, but I'm not sure. I mean, it's kind of passive. So maybe you about should consider this other variation. Like spike. Check. I mean, look at the diagonal, bro. And, and this stupid pawn on d3. I'm, I'm feeling this. Sabo Gergo, play queen d7. And, oh man, there's a Gumbo Serence game where he lost with white last year. I, I, I also played the English defense against him. That was that E5 line that I was talking about. It was just a draw. If only I had known. This was played, my game was played first. Weasel to draw. Queen takes e4. So Sabo Gegra played, played this game back in 2017. <clears throat> His opponent played e6, which is just... Surrender. Sweet surrender. Look at Black's play here. This is just brutal. Check. King takes. Knight f4. Sometimes it's better to be down a pawn. Black's coordination is very good here. We are analyzing games. Very good. So Gomez, Gomez played d4. Knight b4. King d2. Ouch, are you even kidding me? What the... Oh my god. The tactical buzzsaw, this is horrible for white, wow. King d1, knight d3, knight f4, knight f2 check. Oh my god. What a crazy game. Black went on to win. Anyway, okay, well, I think that's better than what happened. 
but um, he plays f3. It's it's Boris Spassky. Born again, Boris. Mira, what's up? Good to see you again. Yes, I saw him yesterday. Um, we spoke to Miro yesterday, this morning. So White battens down on F, F3 and, and E4. Is that ugly or what? But what do we do? He's like, just I'm strong pointing E4. You, you can't hurt me. Yeah, it blunts the bishop on b7, it just solidifies, but spatially black is huge. It's, I guess, it's like a question of when and, you know, when black should push to d4. When you push to d4, you get a King's Indian type of dynamic. Um, but I think I actually was looking at c5. Now, on the other hand, there are probably other creative ways to play this type of position. Just throwing something out there, doing an all-nighter. I'm like all sleepy all the time. I just want to throw this out there. D4, pawn takes pawn. That doesn't work, does it? That's too much. I mean, you could provoke white to play d4 and then go to a different square or something. But it doesn't seem right. Okay, another idea would be double fianchetto. You know, you, you could play... I mean, there's just so many options here for black, it's ridiculous. The one thing I guess you don't really want to do is take here. Even that's probably, like, not bad. But I'm afraid that white is probably equal here. In a save of ending... I think that black like loses a big big chunk of his advantage if you trade pawns and trade queens. So we don't really want to do that. I was going to suggest g6 with a double fianchetto because camel culture says I always fianchetto on my bishops. We're obsessed with fianchettoing here. But I mean it's such a good diagonal. Look at this diagonal. Seriously. And then your king side is secure too. If e5, knight here. But I mean, this is going to shore up the king side. I mean, g6 and bishop g7 is definitely, definitely fine. So I like that. g6, c5. You know, obviously d4, queen a4 check. It looks like it might be a problem. We have this thing happening again. And the other thing, he could go king f2, like bishop b4 check, king f2, possibly even king d1, hiding behind the shield, you know, the human shield. All right, anyways, out of curiosity, I want to see what the computer says. So it says a bunch of different moves. Knight c6, which I don't really like, blocking the c pawn. c5, which I recommend is one of the moves. <clears throat> and then the... The ultra prep move A6, strengthening the C5 approach. wonder if there's a problem with G6. There's no problem with G6, although there's something about E5. Why not here? Yeah, I mean, it's it's totally playable. I don't know. White, white might be a little better here. It's a pretty weird French, man, but this is very complicated. You're now full member of the Let's Flag Gina Club. No respect for flaggers here on the stream. Yeah, Astrobate's, Astrobate's dirty. He's always playing for time. He doesn't look at the clock. He didn't even know he went on time. The game just stopped. Okay, so d4, knight b1. I mean, this is the question. Check. Um, knight c6, knight b5, as I said, bishop b4 check, but maybe not, maybe just like bishop c5. I was concerned about this. Uh, 
I was concerned we overextended ourselves. You know, I, I said this line before. I'm afraid that black is overextended. So maybe d4 ain't so hot. White misses it. Anyway, this is not a perfect game. Both sides made a lot of mistakes here. Now he goes crazy with knight h5. What is this? Same day service? Um, knight h5, like insanely provocative. Hoping for g4, I guess. If g4, queen h4 check, king d2. Okay. Knight h5 is not a principled move, but we'll let it go. Queen a4 check now. Knight c6, but he, you know, he doesn't have a basis for this now. There's no counterplay. There's no knight b5, no bishop f4. Black is fine. Here, and then bishop e7. The macho bishop e7. And then here, going after the pawn. The castles. White wins a pawn, but his development's very slow. So I, I have really no issues with with Asturbate, I mean, um, Yabat is sacrificing a pawn here. But don't we have bishop e4 check? I'm, I'm kind of obsessed with this. Bishop e4 check. Bishop e4 check, bishop d2. I mean, obviously this speaks for itself. Black has compensation for the sacrifice pawn at least. Um, so king somewhere. I mean, this is a problem, dude. There you are. No, I think you have bishop e4 check. It looks very strong. King f2, bishop c5, bishop e3. Can really go psycho with like b5 now. It probably doesn't work. Knight takes b5. Bishop takes e3 check. King e3. Look, I have no idea what's happening here. I'm still sort of... So the, the king is sus on e3. But it doesn't mean that black necessarily has enough compensation. I don't know, but I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if black was winning in like one move. But I suppose he, he would try king f2. Maybe he would do this. Okay, this is also very dicey. But bishop takes, king takes. There's a check on g5. I, I don't know. I don't want to be white here. I would much rather be black. Anyways, you play knight b4, attacking the d3 pawn. And if he defends it with his knight, with a knight move, you play queen takes d4. So, for example, here, here, here. Um, what am I saying? I don't know what I'm saying. I don't know what I'm talking about. That doesn't even matter. Yeah, I don't know. You, yeah, he can't really defend this other than queen b3. Or queen d1. And now you're threatening c5, and it's like, brutal. If, for example, queen b3, c5. Big advantage to black. But a funny thing happened. A3, and Yabatis didn't take this pawn. He wanted to give him a chance. So he didn't want to just, like, totally annihilate his opponent. He wanted to, like, play a game that looked like it was good enough to submit to the stream. This looks just like Slaughterhouse, you know. So he was like, no, no, I need a game for the stream. I'm not going to take on D3 check. C5. Let's let him have a chance. This is horrible for black, of course, because after this and this, we lose all of our pressure on the backward pawn on D3. Although both sides' pawn structures have been damaged by this exchange, I think that white's king is relatively safe here, you know, compared to how it was when this was a half-open file. This, like, kind of random move. And it's ironic that white played b5, but he is attacking d4. Now, rook a, c8, and then, you know, if you're going to take on d4, wouldn't you take with the queen? Try to, like, trade queens? 
I don't know. I figure we're up like two pawns. We'll try to trade queens. Do we send a game for you to look at? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, just just send it with your WeChess account to either Spectacular Camel, aka Ubatis, or to me. Anyway, I'm not going to spend all day on this game. But a funny thing happened on the way to the opera or whatever. Bishop h4 check. And White was just afraid to play g3. He has to play g3, but he was afraid to play it. And there's nothing special for black after g3. You sack your knight. It looks scary. Black, you know, takes with the queen. Check. But after king d1... There just isn't anything clear, like rook f d8, bishop e2, and I, um, look, it's not easy, but I'm, I'm thinking like white is winning here. He's up a knight, I mean, just up a knight, and the king has enough, like, protection from this central mass of stuff, so it takes a little bit of technique, but, but naturally he was afraid to push the pawn, so he goes here. This turns out to be a, a far, you know, more dangerous move in a sense. And now f5. That I was waiting for. I would have probably played that. I would have played that like even earlier, because it makes sense, you know, to try to open up this diagonal for the bishop on b7. The first thing Gina Rook said was, "Well, the pawn in f3, you know, nullifies the bishop on b7." Exactly. Check here. And I guess all that did was really open up the rook, but ultimately Black's King is now in a safer place than it once was. And then Knight C6. And there goes, you know, a good piece. F E4, D E4, Bishop C6, he takes C6. It's all about the king position, king safety. I don't know. Probably white is okay here. But it takes like precise defense. I'm not sure what I would do with black. I guess eliminating his pawn is okay. But I wonder what would happen if like, for example, white played queen d5. It looks dodgy, as they say. I do not want to trade queens. I'd satisfy myself with a perpetual check, though, if I had it. I think we also saw some cases of possible, like, being possible being forced to sack a queen or something. But let's just say for here, here, here. You're just hypothetical. Queen takes and then no checks. <clears throat> Last just lost. I don't know, man. Queen d5. How do we avoid that? Queen d5, check. I'm sorry, no check. Takes. Yeah, maybe you can you can hang on here. Your knight and bishop on the side of the board are just out of play at this point. I suppose black might be able to hang on for a draw, but I don't think you're winning. I was wondering if you had something better immediately, like queen d4, for example. We didn't analyze this. There's no reason you have to take this pawn right away. Or queen c5, like in the game. Q4. 
computer thinks that it's equal. Okay. So it's better to take the pawn. Though I'm not sure which way. I mean, the queen is active here. And you also have this. It's hard to say. Rook takes might, might be a move. But I'm bothered by this move. Wow, so apparently queen c2 is winning. Holy shit. What the... Oh my god, of course. I gave rook c1, but I missed knight f4. Oh jeez. No, there's this. I, I, I'm... Very bad at like looking at the board from the lateral side. Knight f4, dude. Yeah, that variation doesn't work at all. So queen c2 just wins. But I mean, white totally lost his mind here. I mean, played rook takes a7. Rook takes a7 is like no sense of danger whatsoever. You 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 got nothing. Did you um? Did you? Talk about this. Rook c1. I mean, there's a distinct possibility of a queen sacrifice. But I'm not really super confident here that it's enough. But I mean, it is a little scary. I guess like g3. It's a messy position. I kind of doubt black because of these two guys on the side of the board. So if you can't sack your queen, it's hard to find a really attractive move. <clears throat> you know, maybe that's why taking with the rook is better. You're not harassed by rook c1. Then again, I mean, he does have this move here. Very complicated. I do not want to trade queens. So in the game, it was like bishop takes c6, pawn takes, queen takes, and then rook takes a7. And now queen c5, threatening queen f2. That's a big problem. It's like a nimzo where you didn't, like, it reminds me of the f3 nimzo, where you didn't get, get your king to a safe position. And okay, this was cute. He played knight f4 check. And a very nice finish. Now the king has very, very few places to go. So he has to take and then check, 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 here, here, and then like it's made a nine or something. I honestly don't know exactly how. But this is good enough. There's there's a hundred ways to win. Now h5 and if you take it, I have g6 check, I guess. Lots of good moves. And he was nice enough to let you checkmate him. Take, here, take, take, here. Anyway, that was a long first game. Alright, I've got a game from Gina. Game from Gina. This game, maybe. I had some problems playing the exchange variation in the past I was trying to work out. Oh, cheesy noob. Analysis board. Alright, let's see how many games we have for today. We just finished first one. So, tea, teapot. Teapot boo. It's hard to pronounce that, because I don't know what it is. Alright. Tibu pot. Can I go back to the study, please? Welcome, everybody, to the stream. Alright, Spectacular Camel with interesting and entertaining game first. Let's best not say. I love secrets. Alright. But no, we're on game two. Until bribed. 
I'm taking the games in order until bribed to do otherwise. All right, we've got Uber driver. This is just an entertainment. This is a little like intermezzo. Like they give you sorbet between courses at the fancy restaurant. This is your intermezzo. It's Uber driver against NN. Uber driver versus cauliflower. A blitz game, of course, because we can't play serious chess if we're Uber driver. It's a five minute blitz game. Black plays Scandinavian, take, take, knight c3, queen a5. Probably best, objectively. Um, I think. Better than, definitely better than queen d8, which is like ridiculous, and queen d6. I had a funny game. I tried to play queen f5 like a month ago in a game, but it's really horrible. That doesn't work. Queen a5, d4, knight f6, knight f3, and now c6. I guess this is main line. And then so there's two, three really, three main variations. Bishop d2, which I never really liked. You prefer knight f3? Yeah, a lot of people do the Andrew Martin. Andrew Martin was the first person to promote that. He did, like, videos on it, like, ages ago, like, 15 years ago. Um, the Knight of Three against the Scandinavian. Yeah, that's cool. It's hard to say what the best is, really. I mean, I think the computer likes Knight C3 better. I, like, I'm used to playing this. But I don't play E4 much, honestly, just online, just on the stream. <clears throat> Bishop C4. Anand Kasparov, ninety five is another major, major variation. I mean, Kasparov Anand. Yeah. Anand surprised Kasparov. I mean, it was like, what opening could possibly surprise Kasparov where he wouldn't be that well prepared? And honestly, the Scandinavian sucks. But I mean, they just, I guess, guess that better to get Gary in an opening he doesn't know that well than, you know, go into his preparation. Um... Carlson played queen queen d6 queen g6 What are you guys talking about? Okay, so this is um this is like a game I had years ago. Ilya Fugelman played maybe like the only time I ever played the proper Scandinavian with black this kid who was like 2100 played bishop takes f7 check against me. I mean, dude, respect, you know. King takes 95, queen takes e5 resigns. This is still happening even today, 2020. Another 2100 bites the dust. It's pretty funny. But, um, you're supposed to play bishop f5. I only played bishop g4 because it was in this old, I don't know, I just didn't didn't know the main line. h3 is strong, and now black's supposed to play, this is okay, this is like probably best, but white is better, it's like one of those queen d8 Scandinavians, and um, very passive, with no winning chances for black basically. The other possibility is super dangerous. Bishop h5, g4. This is this is really bad for black, I think. Bishop g6, knight e5. But maybe it's playable. I don't know. My old bingo friend, Juan Mayado. Bingo buddies. Okay. <clears throat> h3, whatever. h3, queen h5. That's like... Billy Collins from Harvard Square level move. This is actually a move. Wow. I, I really thought this must be refutable. Mia Drag Savage has played this like a billion times. Does any top player actually play Dragon now? 
Um, didn't like Gawain Jones play it? But he's not a top player. I mean, he's close. He's like close to 2,700. I mean, there have to be a few people, but not really Gina Rook. It's just not... It's just not, um... Something new called the Chinese Dragon. You're going back another 15 years again. You're, you're stuck in, in Knight F3 Scandinavian time zone. You're like me, like you skipped 10 years of chess or something. Um, wow. I did not know this is a real thing. I want to sack the exchange. Pawn takes, queen takes check, bishop f1. No, no, seriously. <clears throat> I don't know this guy, Savage. I, I don't know who he is. He's some Serbian GM. He's got a bazillion games. Can you imagine playing this repeatedly? You'd be, like, so predictable. Speaking of Gawain Jones, he has a game there. You'd be awfully predictable if you played this for black on a regular basis. Yeah, bishop e2. I'm just joking about h takes g4. Dude, seriously? I swear to god I didn't look at this game. Maybe I subconsciously saw it like Bruce Willis on a advertising billboard or something, but I... He really did it. Uber driver, great minds think alike. Um... I'm sure it's unsound, but just for, for a blitz game. Uber driver did this to steal the initiative. Oh my god, knight takes g4, knight e4. What a sick puppy do you even think of that? So how does black, yeah, black just has to play he has to play queen h5. Get out while the getting's good. And I guess you have to calculate a bit because if here um, our options are relatively limited to f5. Yeah, this is cute. F5. Man, that does look a little bit crazy. I'm not sure I like this. Although bishop e2 doesn't work. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. Black's, Black's position actually looks kind of sketchy. Is that really our best? Does Black have another move here? We're threatening knight g3. Okay, well, I guess knight takes g4 is possibly a big mistake. So bishop f1, black doesn't have to take this pawn. But then again, like, how is he getting his knight? How is he getting his queen out? Thanks, everyone. What's up, Chess Zebra? Thanks for being a subscriber. Is there anything to this? Wow. Are you serious? Queen h5, h takes g. We refuted the savage creation. Jesus Christ. I was just kidding about it. Oh man, I had this tactics book by, by Kiriz, I thought. Maybe it was the one by uh, Richter. Kurt Richter had the tactics book. h takes g, queen takes h1. There was a lot of examples where you sack, sack the exchange. Damn, dude. Uber driver, you've refuted this guy's whole whole line. I thought about it too, and I, I just didn't believe in it. But it's actually sound. He can't get out. 
e6 is the best move. g5 drives the knight away. Once the knight moves, you can play a knight move and try to trap the queen. And after queen h5, we're down a whole exchange. Yeah, I mean, chess zebra, if you, if you really take your time and you analyze a lot with stockfish, you'll find a lot of situations where you're down the exchange and you're better. Um, this, this particular chess engine, in, in my opinion, has pretty good judgment about finding ways to, um, to dynamically sacrifice the exchange, the minor exchange. That's amazing, you know, but, but not surprising. So maybe the exchange sack is good, but not better than the mundane move. Uh-huh. But it was certainly surprising for our hero. Bishop f1, knight takes g4, knight e4. And then he played this move. And this is funny. So knight g3, and he resigned. But that's kind of funny. His, <clears throat> his queen isn't trapped. He resigned. Well, of course. <laughs> he resigned here. That's funny. Knight f3 check. He has g1 as well as h2. And h4, actually. So queen f3. Three squares. That's really interesting, Uber Driver. Thanks for sharing. Sharing is caring. Queen h2 is best. But he's he's come up with a dynamic way of playing. It's quite interesting. Okay, that was cool. <clears throat> Next, Astrobate with another masterpiece. Okay. No doubt, like, Savage has probably analyzed that. I mean, if you play such an obscure variation 17 times, even if no one played it over the board, I mean, I'm sure that he's faced it in Blitz games or whatever. So he must know the best line. It was like plus one for white. I mean, it's not game over. I think the entire Scandinavian is probably like plus one for white. Astrobate with white, e4, e5. The Vienna. Knight f6, putting pressure on e4. I think that's the best. And then the, the classic error. The only good move for black here is d5. d6 is a passive. King's Gambit declined. Philidor. Yeah, but the interesting thing is Mozart, and nice to see you. The interesting thing about e takes f4, it's actually not lost for black. So after e takes f4, e5, there's this one game, knight g8, and now it's almost like hypermodernism, like a Brooklyn variation. If black plays precisely, he's only slightly worse. This is not, it's not game over. Yeah, so he finds it, knight f3, and then this guy played d5, but I don't know. I guess d5 is okay. I, I, I prefer d6. You know, destroying the central pawn at e5. You actually know Brooklyn Variation Theory? No. But I just compare it to that because it's you know, obviously similar. Um, Again, I repeat this all the time, but Varga Zoli told me that that was the original way the Aliakin defense was played in really old games, and um, before it was known as it's, it's as a as a footnote in the Aliakin defense by Lev Albert. Um, historically, knight g8 was the original way the Aliakin was played, but um, yeah, d6. It's unclear. There's queen e2, there's like d4, followed by queen e2. The idea will be to play queen e2 at some point. 
But it's playable for Black. He's not lost outright. You know, I think a lot of people would kind of like be like, "Oh shit, I'm dead." You know, after after Pawn takes Pawn. Surprisingly, it's not completely dead for Black. So Astrobeat has like five or six games from this position. Um, okay, the idea with Queen E2 is to play like Pawn takes Pawn D4, I guess. You don't. Um, you don't, like, do queen takes e5 check or something, necessarily. You've got, you've got bishop f4 and castles long. It's kind of like a, um, like a knight g8 alien, exactly. So d6, d4. Now the point would be to transpose. If pawn takes pawn, queen e2. You can also... Uh, you might be able to experiment, but I guess it's almost forced. <clears throat> I mean, Astrobate, like, loses all of his advantage here. He probably loses all of his advantage with Pawn Takes Pawn. Acer, you don't want to let the Queens come off. I mean, you knew we knew this was the move. In fact, if we look up Astrobate's games, I bet you he'll have played the right move at some point. Hello. Hello. All right, let's go. Damn. So check out Astrobate's expert, the world leading expert in this position. He now has 15 games with white in this position. He played knight takes e5 eight times, which by the way allows queen h4 check. He played queen e2 three times, bishop c4 twice, and d takes e5 twice. Queen e2 has the best score based on an irrelevant sample size. This move is okay, but I'm I'm just worried about queen h4 check. We're gonna have to play it like a Steinitz, a Steinitz king's gambit after that. Here, king e2. Asterby played g3. I mean, what are you going to do? Sack your rook? Maybe you can. g3, pawn takes pawn. I was going to say queen f3. g2 check. Does that work? Here. I just got to see this. Here, check. And then the king hides somewhere. And like... G, bishop g4. This is such a crazy position. Yeah, white's lost. Damn. Yeah, you can't you can't allow this queen h4 check, bro. Well, you can't play g3. Oh, he actually has to play king d2. This is already bad because of check. Yeah, yeah. All right. No, knight e5 is no good, man. And this is like equal at best. Oh, bishop b5, okay. That's a weird move. That's a weird move, okay. But yeah, no, hands down, queen e2. Asri, you've played this in a number of games, even like two months ago. This is definitely right. So here's a game here where someone played bishop e7. That makes sense to block the e-file. We, we no longer have bishop takes f4. And there's this Cunningham, Cunningham variation type of bishop h4 check. So what does white play? Queen e5. And if knight c6, importantly, you have bishop b5, which that's not what Mozart was talking about, but, you know, ironically, it's a move. It looks like white's still better here. It is the best move, queen takes e5. Yeah, so this is actually like best best play queen e2 bishop e7 queen takes e5 and then knight f6 apparently and astrobate has played as far as this in a game last year white white's still better despite material equality you're gonna castle queen side 
So it's it's like sometimes you've forgotten your own games, man. You've played so many games. It's crazy. This is a huge mistake though. So you give away like most of your advantage. Not as bad as knight takes. Yeah, I evaluated this as equal. That's what that's what the computer says. I mean, I'm 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 thinking equal. Yeah. I'd rather, I don't know, I'd rather take with a knight. I, I really don't want to lose my right to castle here. It, it, It's probably okay. If we take with the king, we might be able to put the king on c1, like a Berlin defense with king c8. If we take with the knight, it's going to take time to get it back in the game. But I can't believe your opponent didn't trade queens. It's like mind-numbing. How can black not play queen takes queen check here? It's like they didn't know the queens were like attacking each other. I want you to double my, you know, to leave my king in the center. Not me. It's you. It's on you. Your memory is hit or miss. You know, to be perfectly honest, I guess like you could probably play queen e2 here. If you really, really, really want to play a crazy game just for fun. But, I mean, this is correct. Now, nice to see Asterby play an ending. Get the pawn back, man. The other possibility is bishop d2, keeping your structure intact and preparing to castle queenside. This pawn is a dead, dead duck anyway. We assume the f4 pawn is dead. You forget if you have a good memory. I don't know. I don't know either. The older I get, the less I know. That's what my mom said. So, knight g5. Yeah, this looks wrong, dude. You're out on a tangent. Although you did get a face hugger. He has f6. That's kind of inconvenient. But I suppose, like, I suppose objectively, like, knight g5 is not that bad. It's really not that bad. You're ready to go. And all your pieces are rocking here. Bam. Yeah, now black needs to interpose something on d7. Bishop, I guess, because, I mean, if we do the bishop, we can hide our king. Again, Berlin defense style. On c8. That's a funny joke, though, Mozart. He played this in a loud knight d5 check, and it's just game over. Yeah. How do we keep it going, though? I like rook d3. I have this technique, which I haven't done in a while. I, I, I came up with this as, like, a training technique. Try to play a game where you play, like, anonymous player, whatever, and you, you, you handicap yourself, not by giving like time odds or, or material odds, but unbeknownst to your opponent, you have to have the following restrictions. You can only move forwards or sideways. Try to play a game. This is very interesting. Try to play a game as a training exercise where you play some random player. I, I like to do it like 10-0. And you have this restriction. or. Anyway, contingency that you, you can only move forward or move sideways. You're never allowed to move backward. So if you... If your queen gets to the back rank, it can only, like, cruise along the back rank. I found it very interesting. Astrobate has that kind of going on here, where he, he only moves forward. Have you made any backward moves? Do you have to apply it all day in real life? What does that mean exactly? Like walking around your house? You can never go in reverse. I think Astrobate, uh, he went backward. Like here you can't play knight takes bishop. See? Now if your opponent knows the con constraint, they can like use it against you. But the important thing is that the opponent doesn't know about it. You can never, like, tell your friend, like, here's what I have to do. I have to do a 
it's it's a training exercise in, in teaching passive players how to play more aggressively. You're never allowed to retreat. Th this is something parallel parking. Yeah, that's like parallel park like a Hungarian man. Hungarians don't know how to parallel park. They'd be good at this. So Astrobate would be able to play knight takes c7. He would have to play knight takes c7 here. You ruin the game by playing knight takes b4. Never, never move backward. The real, the re, it's a real bitch if like your rook or queen gets to the back rank. That I found to be the biggest problem. And so consequently, um, you have to be really careful about like not bringing the big, the heavy pieces out early in this form of chess. If they get attacked, they have to move forward. Sometimes they have to like suicide themselves, essentially. No, you can't do knight f6, man. That's backward. Once the knight is on h7, it can only move to f8. But I won some amazing games doing this. I had some, you can get some really amazing, um, I played some really amazing games where your opponent is like, what are, what is this guy thinking? He doesn't know you're not allowed to move backwards. I should probably do a video doing this. There were some bad losses, but there were some fantastically interesting games when I tried it. So Astrobate made just one backward move so far. Check. Uh-oh, there it is. See, I, did you peek ahead, move 11? You saw on knight h7, knight f6. Yeah. You peeked. He peeked at the, at the moves, and she did. No peeking. So that's Astrobate's second retreating knight move. Knight a8. Now the knight can only stay there on a8. It's basically dead. Knights become dead when they go to the back rake. But your opponent doesn't know that, of course. Rook d6. Bishop d3. King c1. Lateral moves are okay. Third retreating knight move. Now a retreating bishop move. So you made four retreat you made four retreating moves in this game. Alright. But very nice. Nice, nice. Next game, Sumaher. Saji system. Sumaher versus NN. You think you need two queens versus nothing in the ending. Oh yeah, it's pretty awkward. You don't want, and that's the other secret. You don't want to get, you don't want to play an ending, okay? You have to checkmate them on the first, like, drive-by. Yeah, yeah, don't expect your rook to come back. It's really awkward when your rook is, like, on the back rank in the ending. They, yeah, it would be hard. I, I try to avoid end games in that variant. Um, all right, next. Sumaher versus NN. But nevertheless, I found it very interesting. It changes your perspective. <clears throat> what game is number mine? Number six. This is number four. You're number six. Yeah, you got the rook on the back rank that can avoid stalemate. So Sumaher with c4, e6, knight c3. I mean, I have a lot of time on my hands if I'm coming up with stuff like this. But I was thinking, like, it could be a really good training exercise for players that generally play too passive, passively. Um, imagine if, if we, we have a, a student who has a tendency to be too defensive and afraid, and I force him, I force him to play, you know, we should come up with a name. It's like suicide chess or something, you know. We'll call it suicide chess. I need a name for it. Um, we force the, the passive players who are too fearful to play this way. It'd be really comical. Bishop g5, bishop e7, e3. And now, Sumaher versus NN. I don't know if, I think this is an over the board game, actually. Sumaher sent me a, he was talking about a blitz tournament though. I'm not sure. A6. So this is like an early... Um, I 
Yeah, right. I, I'm thinking Suicide Chest might not be the best, you know, politically correct, correct name. That's why I'm offering other, other s submissions. I came up with Forward Chess, but I think that's already, like, a website or something. Um... Kamikaze. Kamikaze Chess. Did Reski just forbade a student of his from making a draw? They could only win or have to resign while in a dead drawn position. That's interesting. No retreat, Chess. One way chess. No way out chess. Too many words. Okay, a6, queen c2. I think it's a cool variant though. a6, queen c2. I mean, they could take and play b5 here. No, so I think against a6, this is very early, but. You know, Rubinstein would probably exchange pawns. There's a famous Rubinstein game where the Carlsberg got played later, and he did, like, pawn takes pawn. But that was where Black played, like, c6 and the a6. And he maneuvered, like, knight a4, knight c5. I mean, you know, c5 is a common idea. In these types of positions, it becomes, like, more justified. No doubt... Zuckertort would be all about c5. Yeah. Zuckertort would do this, like, for no reason in his first World Championship match. I mean, the, in the World Championship match against Steinitz. But. I feel like Black, Black should probably take here. You know, on another note. Was it Sumihara? I don't know. But, I mean, this move is really annoying. Like... No one plays that at a high level. But the funny thing is, I, I don't think it's like really bad at all, you know? Okay. Okay, so, so C6 is super passive. I'm thinking he should try to take it. Maybe it's too early. I mean, in any case, black should probably castle. He doesn't have to commit to anything here. But c6 and a6 are so early. Now you're you're really begging for for c5. This isn't so good here because of like symmetrical and putting the knight on c6, I would imagine. But c5 looks legit. I mean obviously black can play b6, and if b4 you run into a5. And you can't play a3. But I don't know, it's complicated. Now black plays into b7, and, and we're, we're pretty much transposing to something. It's just that a6 isn't typically played before castles. I mean, I think this would be a transposition. It would likely result in my game with Hal Terry when I won the... I had this with Hal Terry at the New England Open in, like, 2001 or something. Rubinstein did the same. But honestly, I'm not that impressed by it. It's just an exchange variation. Um, I managed to beat Hal Terry. Rubinstein managed to beat his opponent. But I'm still not sure that we should definitely exchange here on d5. c5 is more aggressive. And then black has to try to play either e5 or b6. This, I hate when people play h6 for black. Um, I wonder about bishop f4.
Typically, you always play bishop h4, but there are some instances where this might actually be a good move. I think h6 really weakens black's king side. It might be relevant in this type of line. Knight h5, and then, um, you know, bishop c7 traps. Sometimes work if it was white's move in certain lines. If he could play knight takes d5 here, he would win a pawn. If I was castled. So basically there are, there are situations like this. 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 You guys know this trap, like, takes here. Um, the rook actually needs to be on e8. So there's a lot of variables that need to be in place. Castles, rook c1, for example. Um, pawn takes pawn. Rook e8, pawn takes pawn. This can happen, but I mean, it's extremely rare. Pawn takes and then bishop c7. But I mean, for that to happen, like all these variables have to fall into place. If c5 was already on the board, then bishop f4. Yeah, it's like a, it's like an a6 Slav, like a Chebenenko Slav. But I do think like this is, this type of position is interesting um, with like knight h5, like sometimes here. Because Black's made all sorts of weakening moves. I mean, h6, c6, a6. He's not castled. And when you take this, both these captures... I mean, here we're threatening g4. Black has to do, like, g6, and then he gets, like, blown, blown away by bishop takes g6. So this particular instance, it may be that like bishop e5 is is actually good. I mean, what do you do after this? I'm threatening g4 and g6, so basically g5. It looks like black literally has to play g5. It's the only move that doesn't lose. It's pretty crazy. No, g4, knight g7. It's like having a b7 knight in the Royal Lopez. I mean, clearly white is better here. Castle's queenside. I don't know about winning. And I kind of missed my dark square bishop. But I think white is better. Um, so there's that too, you know. I hate h6. Bishop h4. And now d takes c4. Bishop takes c4. Yeah, and here the Valerie Frank lock defense is like b5. Bishop d3. And, and trying to play for c5. Is there a reason why we can't do that? Like, if it was my game, <clears throat> I wouldn't... Let's see, h6, bishop... How did this go? Oh, you played bishop d3. Yeah, I wouldn't play bishop d3, necessarily. What else can we do? Well, as I said, I think maybe pawn takes pawn. Or c5. What were we talking about? Yesterday was Valerie. It's in my mind, but he had this student... He taught his students to play like that with black. This guy I knew. Um, I'm not a big fan of rook d1. I'm not a huge fan of castle's queen side, but it's it's probably playable here if you really want to play crazy chess. Um, but again, I think like this is very principled, for sure. But like. Mozart is saying, like, with the bishop on f4, it's even better. Yeah, I mean, okay, he's playing a mistake. I know this was played by... You know, honestly, like, this type of position was played by strong players in the past. For example, like, Blackburn. I think I saw played very similar to this. I had, um... I had a game against some... 2200 who played like this against me, and I had a really hard time beating him. But it looks wrong, you know? You're supposed to play bishop g3, keep the bishop on the board. I mean, what would Aliakin do? You keep the keep the pieces on the board with bishop g3. So the game I had with this guy was like takes, pawn takes, 
and he did something like C5, and, and I was looking through games, and I found this Blackburn game where he played almost the exact same way. Was it Blackburn? Maybe it wasn't Blackburn. It wasn't Blackburn, it was someone else. Uh, Chigorin. I, I said Blackburn, I don't know why. It wasn't Blackburn, I haven't looked at Blackburn lately, so it was Chigorin. Chigorin played some, you know, he, he's named for this knight c6 variation of the Queen's Gambit, but he didn't play it very often. It's interesting. In reality, Chigorin played all kinds of stuff, and, and actually, you know, played like orthodox Queen's Gambits like this. He didn't really play Chigorin a lot. Famously in Hastings, I guess, against Pillsbury. Um, but, you know, I think this is better for white, but not so easy. But I think you should play bishop g3. Probably this this line, though, bothers me more. Takes, bishop takes, and b5. Because black's playing c5, what are we going to do? What, what do you do here with white? Do you play bishop e2? Do you play bishop d3? And what are you going to do when black plays c5? It's like a, a marin where your bishop's outside the structure. Bam. Um, black's threatening bishop b7. And I'm, I'm still sitting here with my king on e1. So I would typically not play bishop d3 here, but what would I do? Yeah, I think you should do something different. My friend Dave Vigorito always liked rook d1. But I, you know, it's not terrible. Um, don't really know what it does. It, it dissuades c5 and rook, rook and e5. I always thought it was kind of an overrated plan for white. You know, here it might not be too bad. Rook d1 is okay. Castle's queenside is really risky. Pillsbury was assassinated. They knew the brothel was a den of syphilis. They just wanted to, like, eliminate a competitor, I guess. Knight on bd7, bishop d3. Yeah, so this, I'm taking too much time. But who is they? Was it... Was it QAnon? The original QAnon. Who is they? Who exactly is they? His... Was it, like... A particular competitor? Or just the ubiquitous they. We all know who they is. <clears throat> they were just out to get the New Englanders. Um, Alright, anyways. Let's see the game. So bishop d3, h6 here. Takes, takes. Knight d5, takes. Nothing wrong with bishop e7. It's okay. And now, I don't really like knight takes d5. There's no reason to do that. I mean, you're like giving him a strong pawn on d5. This is dubious. You're like literally improving black's chances with knight takes d5. What would Alyakian do? Is what you have to ask yourself here. Alyakian would... To what? Castle? I think Aliakin would castle here. You know, there's another game he had with Capablanca where something like this happened. It was it's, it was a different position, obviously, slightly different position. But you have to always deal with Queen B4 check. This is funny though, this this works here. And you can't take the bishop because of ninety six check. Exactly, exactly, Mozart. Very close. It was very close. Yeah, it wasn't exactly the same position. I'm sure that, you know, black didn't play both a6 and c6, but the same basic premise. Exactly. No a6, I think. Avoid the exchange of pieces. Streamlabs, Streamlabs did you buy a subscription? I think Streamlabs, like... 
I think Acerbeat bought like a, a subscription to Streamlabs or something. Even I'm not like popping for that. Or Twitter for that matter. I'm glad I never signed up for Twitter. Did you guys hear about Elon Musk having a getting like bargaining with <laughs> with Stephen King on Twitter about the price of having your account verified on, on Twitter? He's been bartered down from twenty to, to eight dollars because Stephen King like made fun of his his pricing scheme. What does he just like come out with these numbers like out of his ass or what? You think like there was some big you know? You think like there was some some analysis, some you know serious analysis that would go into like setting the price of something, but it's just whatever number like Elon Musk like pulls out of his ass is the price, you know, it's like ridiculous. Stephen King should definitely just quit Twitter. Um, but okay, freedom of speech, you know, better, better he doesn't. I, I wouldn't be able to handle it. Better I don't have a Twitter account. So, yeah, I agree with, with 94, but I'm not sure it's the best move. I mean, Castles is fine. This is bad. This is bad, I mean, First of all, this is really insipid. White's better, but it's really, really boring. But after ED, I mean, black's pretty much okay. I guess black um, has to play knight f6. You could possibly consider maybe rook e8. See, this is why I don't like playing h6 in the exchange variation. I had this teammate who cost us like qualifying for the first division because he lost like three games consecutively in H6 exchange variations. Um, they always let him play a higher board than he deserved because he was like driving a car. <laughs> but if, if you play H6, it means like you're gonna have problems playing F6 later. So in other words, if you do like, I don't know, rookie eight, Rook b1, knight f8, then when I go knight e5, you know, you can't play f6 because it, like, weakens your diagonal. You can play it, but it's, like, not great. You know, you don't really want to play h6 and f6. Create weaknesses in your position. The bottom line is that there's no reason to play h6 in the exchange variation of the queen's gambit, I believe. Now, there may be exceptions to the rule, but people just do it, like, mindlessly. Yeah, Astrid, I think you need to check that Streamlabs subscription out, dude. I don't think you need to have a Streamlabs subscription. <clears throat> All right. Bishop d3, castles, castles. Now, knight f6. You see, knight e5. Now, if you want to get rid of the knight, and you go knight e7, and I go f4, got bad news for you. You can't play f6 because of the threat of knight g6. Maybe you can, though. You got this. Damn it. Oh, you can't, though. But bishop h7. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, bishop h7 is kind of a problem. So, yeah. It's over. Okay, knight f6. What is Streamlabs? It's a... OB, it's, it's a platform for streamers it's software for streamers it's not necessary but like optional um, knight g4 <sighs> the classic So we have a problem. Where's the Uber driver when we need him? I just like want this to work somehow. F4, knight tc3. I keep feeling like there's a tactic here for white somehow. There's nothing here. I want there to be a tactic too much. It's just not there. 
Then White did something inaccurate. Castles here. You're you're basically facing the threat of this. So I mean there is the possibility of H three. Making fun of H six, now I'm recommending H three. There's still a chance White could castle Queenside. Yeah, this is a problem though. Knight g4 is a strong move that appears to virtually equalize. Inherent draw for. So instead of rook, rook b1, maybe. I mean, instead of a3, maybe you've got something else. Rook fb1. If you work FB1, black's going to play A5. So I guess there's nothing better than this. Now knight D7, B4, A5. I'm overanalyzing this position. It's just an exchange variation. Standard. Standard transmission. Instead of rook b1, lady 5 can be played now. Ah. Oh, right, with the bishop on e6, he could have played 95 now. Exactly. And then here you've got f4. And white's better. Yeah, I mean, if, if black takes, I think white's better. It's not winning, but white's better. You could probably recapture either way. They're both both possible. Like this is sort of something that pops up. I've had in some games similar. Th this could be a problem here. Double attack. You've got rook f3 though. Black needs to get in f6 or he's in big trouble. Maybe he can play it. Maybe he can not play it because of this. Oof. The oof gun. That's a bit of an issue. This. Yeah, maybe D takes a safer. Looks very strong for white. The F6 thing. So, alright. A3. He gave up on the other plan too soon. White's still better. Though very slightly. White's playing like he had Dvoretsky for a coach, though. with <laughs> Not allowing a draw. Classic minority attack. Now that's a good rook. That's a tasty rook. Queen a5 now. Wow, bishop a6, very nice. And black doesn't have anything, right? Like, there's no bishop h3. There's no way. Very nice. And this is game over. I don't know if you want to play b5 here. I would imagine it's winning, though. Like, here, takes, and then takes, and then just go with the... The 5 on 3 versus Isolani. This has to be winning. It will take a while. And we're going to have to play king up to c3 and then break with b5. I'm not sure if we want to play f4 or not. You know, again, I think this might be a good idea. I wonder what the computer would do. Not f4. It's like a little inflexible. h4 instead of f4. But now you're, you're getting in b5. This, this is okay. The bishop can come here. Right. 
But I'm not sure we're winning. You know, maybe White did screw this up. Maybe this is a draw. Can White get Zunzwang here? I am not certain. I mean, like, uh, first of all, you can play King C7, right? But alright, maybe it's not, not a big deal. I'm going to fight him every inch of the way here. He just let you waltz in over there. Oh, man. I guess somebody lost on time. <clears throat> but there is the problem with king, king here, bishop, check. Presumably white is winning there. And we're threatening king h7. Probably white is winning. That was a long one. Okay. So we got Thomas Reinsen next. Fifth game. Thomas Reinsen against our old friend Schieber Spieler. This is played in a simul. I believe in a simul this week. No, maybe not. Because it's equal time. Oh. No, it has to be a simul. It's unequal. Inequal or unequal. F horrible. I mean, Sumer was like putting his pawns in the right color, but that's not everything. You don't want to just blindly put the pawns on, on the, the dark squares. You know, the fluidity of the pawns is important too. So F4 was kind of over committal. So Schieber Spieler is white, Thomas is black. <sighs> Thomas, I need to get rid of this Hester bait. Um, Sheber Spieler is really hard to... It's really hard. He's got such a solid style. Um, the best chance against him is to make it tactical, you know. He's he's tactically good, but he's fallible. You know, in, in like positional play in endgames, he's, he's nearly, like, perfect. Your best chance is attacking and, and trying to go for his king and, and complicated positions. I've had success with things like the Benoni, um, very dynamic openings, like the Benoni, the Budapest Gambit, Knight F3, H6, but I don't beat him often. Here Thomas has gone into like a mainline opening, and of course you see uh, G3. I was looking at Bolasovsky games yesterday for this King's Indian series that I was doing, and the funny thing was, like in the 50s, Everybody played G3. It was like the main line of the King's Indian. It's funny. I mean, I looked at Bolasowski's games, and it was like Fianchetto, 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 Fianchetto. The game after game was just everyone followed Botvinnik and played with white. They played G3. You would think, like, oh, there'd be more people. There were some, you know, like Taimanov and, I don't know, Averbach that would take him on in, in like, classical King's Indians. But the g3 is the safe way to play. So you're playing um, old school. Yeah, exactly. Zurich 1953 era. Exactly. No, Bolosowski played in that tournament. He had some interesting games with, like, Bronstein, Averbach, Kotov. But that's when the King's Indian was was really like becoming an opening. It started in the late 30s. You could do an interesting article about its history. Um, but Bolosowski's like first game in the database is like 1940. I thought he's a good example, one of many. But um, he was really aggressive. Queen C2, actually he didn't play this line that much. He played some games with it. But Bolosowski actually liked, um, he liked the Pano, you know, even back then. This has become, I think, the most uh, trendy variation today. 
but Bolesowski was playing it back in the 50s and 60s. Um, but again, this is the more classical approach. This is the old school. It's like old, old Indian King's Indian style. You know how it ended. <laughs> it's still good. Um, at, to some level. But this is bad. So Queen C2, interesting move order by Sheeperspieler. I have actually never seen anyone play that. Humpy Kondaru did an interesting thing once. She played like... She played Queen C2 here, I think. Yeah, she's done this repeatedly. Um, so you, you can you can experiment with Queen C2 like as early as before. She did that once on the first Saturday when I, we were playing in the same tournament. I was like, what? That's actually interesting. Um, she lost the Ni Qua. Um, but let's see. Queen C2 here. Commonly played, but not not usually first. So usually white plays Knight C3, but, but Sheba Spieler is very deliberate. His opening repertoire is so narrow that it's like worked out in every variation. You know, he knows exactly what he's doing. His biggest weakness is the narrowness of his repertoire. After queen c2, you know, you can play c6 if you want to, but, and again, you can play like rook e8 if you want to, but you basically have to play e5, Thomas. You have to play e5. This is an unusual move order. Like, usually white will play knight c3, and when you play e5, then they might play queen c2. Um... But I've never seen anyone use this move order. So Sheber Spieler gets his stuff from, from other players who are strong. Bunch of games here. Move order. The point is, I don't know. What's the point? Why is Queen C2 better than Knight C3? Maybe you can play Rook D1 and delay the Knight C3. So after E5, Rook D1 first. This is protected, so there's no, like, knight b6 things later. Anyway, I'm going to have to research this more. I, I haven't seen queen c2 before. My king's Indian is a little rusty. I was thinking of bringing it out of the out of the, the garden shed. Um, we played a couple games a couple years ago, but not recently. I, I almost brought it back out of the, the garage and then put it back in. It's a lot of work for black to play the kings in the end. Queen c2, and then c5. So this is definitely not great. You're you're playing a kind of like bad Marazzi or Benoni after c5. If white plays d5, you, you're playing the Benko or something, and you're fine. You could probably play b5 right away. Yeah. Riefschlager versus Miles. But that's not the point. You know, white is not going to play d5. This is bad, this is bad. And you can't play b6 and, like, Fianchetto, your bishop. And even if you did, he would bury you later with, like, d5 when he wants to. You played c5 because I was hoping to get a Benoni structure. <clears throat> no, he's not going to play d5. See, he knows... <coughs> he knows that his queen is not, you know, placed properly um, in a, in a Fianchetto Benoni. But the problem is, like, you don't have anything great. Your bishop is buried, and he has more waiting moves than you do. Of course, he plays the best move. So here, I don't know what to recommend. I think you should probably take on d4 and play, like, just what is basically an inferior... My guess is you should play an inferior Marazzi. Um, I don't have a better suggestion. You could play something like rook b8. And just try to hang out. Wonder if you could play b6. Is there... Is there a problem here, officer? <clears throat> Maybe. Maybe, you know, something like that. So, rook b8. 
a6, but I don't like your position. White's better. Now he played b3. Um, not sure. Okay, I'm not like you're lost or anything. I just don't particularly like black setup. So, what is white supposed to do? Knight c3, you're, you're annoying this pawn on c4. He doesn't like that. Queen c7 looks reasonable. Under the circumstances. This looks good. And now c takes d4. Knight takes d4. You transpose to a Marazzi. Here. I would assume that you should probably play a6. You play a6, you're threatening b5 later, bishop b2, something like rook b8. You still, you know, are going to have trouble playing b5 because of this knight c6 thing. Instead of bc7, what? Maybe, uh, a6 can wait for a bit. Uh-huh. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. I mean, it's not that bad for black. It's just like an inferior sort of Marazzi. It's not, it's not like he's lost. You're going to have to be careful here. You probably, you know, this is probably not a mistake playing rook b, getting off the diagonal. You played what here? Okay, knight c5, knight c3, a6, bishop b2. And then you just like went e5. E5 is acerbate like positional, positionally incorrect move that can only be played if there's a tactical justification. But I mean, what is he threatening here? You know, white doesn't necessarily have a grave threat. So, I think you should you should just like hang tight. Play bishop d7. You've got knight here if it, if it gets attacked. I mean, ultimately, he could overrun you with his central pawns or something like in a Benoni with e5, but it's not so easy. If he plays b4, you have knight e6. And he faces some trouble here along the file. So it's not so easy to, to make progress for white. He'll probably, if I know him, he would play h3. I know what I would do. I would play h3. You put your rooks probably on c8 and b8. White is slightly better, but it's not so easy. On the downside, it's hard to trade pieces. Maybe you can swap pieces by trying to play knight e6 at some point. But you're aiming for b5. I mean, that's, that's the main plan. This is really, really gross. I mean, e5. Unless you have some absolutely golden tactical reason with bishop f5, and maybe you do, you know, maybe you have some kind of tactical justification here. You're gonna, you're compromising your your position long term. So, you know, burning your bridges behind you. But you can calculate, like, he could sack a piece, man. I won a lot of games in the King's Indian with this type of, like, positional piece sacrifice. One. Another pawn here. Another brother. Another brother, Daryl. Honestly, you got some kind of bishop f5 coming down later. I don't know when. But it's, it's murky. It's possible... White might be able to do some kind of crazy ass, you know, sacrifice of a piece for three pawns. I wouldn't be entirely surprised if this was sound. The computer is not totally buying it. Definitely like Emery Tate land. Um, I'm just saying, like, be on the lookout for it. It maybe doesn't work. Knight f3, and then bishop f5. Right, so you, you sold your soul to the devil to get your pieces out, <clears throat> but you blocked your, your g7 bishop, and you have a backward pawn on the d-file. 
you know, do you have enough justification is the question. So queen c1. Watch this square and this square. I, I know this player, you know, he's very strong positionally. There'll be either knight g5 or knight d2 in control of the e4 square. Um, you know, you might want to think about h6 at some point to keep him off of g5. And it's a like, generally useful move in the King's India. I think h6 makes sense here. You played rook d8, but there's no no immediate reason why you have to play that move. I guess if he plays knight g5, I don't know. I mean, he played you played rook d8 and you played knight g5, but I mean knight d2. But why knight d2? Why not knight g5? I mean, it's a simul. He can't play perfectly, but um, because bishop h6 is just not a big deal. I mean, you can play like h4 there. He was afraid of 94 with tempo, but maybe he, maybe you're right, Mozart. I wasn't sure. You know, I trust Schieberspieler knows what he's doing, but, but yeah, I mean, this is a bit more natural, definitely. I mean, to go here, the queen might be able to go to e3 or e1. He was obviously afraid of 94, but I'm not sure it's a problem. You know, something like this. It may just be like, white's better. It's a simul, and I guess he, he didn't think it through all the way. Queen c1 is a tad passive. Yeah, I agree. I wanted to mention it, but I thought, eh. Knight d2. I would prefer to play queen d2. So this is like, you know, problem. If you just swap, start swapping pieces here, he's going to, like, torture you in an end game. So you got to be careful. You do have bishop h6 here. I mean, this has to be considered, man. The way he played it now, he almost... Man, what is he going to do? Jesus. I guess he has h3, g4. This looks kind of problematic for white. What, what, do you, what does he do after bishop h6? I mean, I'm not sure you're threatening anything great. But he can't possibly play e3. I mean, this looks... Can he? It looks horrible. No. I don't know, man. This this looks pretty dangerous. So you missed it. You can't screw around with the static weakness you have on the back... You know, on the d6 pawn. You, you wasted a massive amount of time here with bishop e6. Your bishop was fine where it is on f5. If he plays e4, so that's great. You're controlling e4. If he has time to play like h5, knight e4, he's probably in control of the position. Actually, that's not possible. Yeah, so, I mean, honestly, you could even play that. Oh, he finds knight f1, knight e3. Oh, shit. Yeah, I agree, Mozart, but he has knight f1, knight e3. Now king h7, and then knight e3, bishop h6. But its situation is not quite as good as it was. I guess it's still good. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I don't know. It looks it looks pretty decent. He can't get out of the pin. <laughs> he has a, this is pretty crazy, man. He literally can't get out of the pin. This rook on a1 is paying the price, too. I agree. Yeah, h, h5 is fine. I was thinking of that. Yeah, you went, you went, like, soft passive here. This is not... not great. He's executing his plan. See, the problem is, like, this is not really a big deal. I mean, bishop h3, white doesn't care so much about that. He basically wants to lock down the d5 square. 
He'll let you exchange light square bishops. Technically, he has quite a few pawns on light squares. Yeah, yeah, the queen c1 was was inaccurate. But I think this is an important moment. This is maybe like your last chance to play bishop h6. Another problem, you know, just occurred to me, like, he might have b4, no? Doesn't he have b4? Okay, in this particular position, if b4, you can play this, and this is still weak. Well, let's say on the next move, j3, thanks for subscribing with Prime. Knight e3, I mean, is he, is he now threatening b4? And when you retreat, he just, like, snarfs your pawn on d6? As promised. Thank you, j3, for subscribing. A man of his word. So, bishop h3. Generally, you're weakening his king's side, trying to trade off his light square bishop. But notice how, like, you know, Schieberspieler doesn't play bishop h1. He doesn't care about that. He knows the important thing is, is focusing on this control of the center with d5. And he certainly wants to get out of that pin. So you could have played bishop h6. I wonder here if he has some crazy... Could white, like, possibly go go insane with, like, f4? And the idea would be there would be something here at the end of the day on the long diagonal. Can we turn the tables on black is what I'm asking. You know, with like queen c3 and down down the long diagonal. And you've got him he's got you pinned on this diagonal here. Like this thing could turn into a bloodbath where actually you're just completely lost. And bishop takes, bishop takes, starting queen c3 and hasta la vista. Like, he's threatening to win in one move here with queen c3, and it's it's surprisingly difficult to defend against that. I mean, you'd have to play bishop g7, I guess. And just hunker down. Or, you might be able to do, like, uh, rook here and block him. No, there's a lot of interesting stuff going on in this game. But, um... Mozart was talking about... B4... Let's see, knight e3? You mean like here? Bishop h6, b4? Oh, you mean after bishop h3. Right, bishop h3 was the game. Now I could have played b4. If you take on g2, you mean just take on c5. Uh-huh. Keep the bishop. Yeah, and that looks crazy. While while Queen H3 is very dangerous, Wade has unbelievable control of the D5 square. I don't think I've seen anything quite like that before. He could stick a piece on D5 to block your bishop. So it's not that easy for you to destroy him with something like Queen H3. Although I still, I don't like it for white. You know, it gives me the creeps, that light square bishop being gone. I think he probably has to recapture on g2. And then you've got the square back. You can go to e6 <clears throat> with threats of here. You know, so I think something like this would happen, where slowly white just secures control of, of the light square d5 and is better. Right, the d5 dominatrix. If Schieberspieler gets you in a position where he has like a static advantage, you're dead. You know, he's very good at like exploiting small advantages. You need to get him into unclear territory where his king is exposed or, you know, there's some question about what's going on. He doesn't like unclear positions. He likes clear, clean positions. Uh... Knight cd5, bishop g2, king g2, yeah, this is what happened, and he's got what he wanted now. He's got a nice kind of clean position. Not a lot of danger, and then he doesn't even want to play f3. He played king g1.
Yeah, I mean, I think here you have to roll the dice, probably. But you had to defend against e7, uh-huh. So probably your best bet. <clears throat> well, I mean, you got several moves. I don't see this rook being great. I mean, you might as well do, like, rook e8 at this point. And, and you try to roll the roll the, the pawns. But you're worse strategically. And it just doesn't make sense. I think we have to... Well, I see, you know, this knight on d5 is very strong. Pretend you're playing a Sveshnikov, I guess, and just let it live there. I was going to say f5. That's a really passive move, but okay. I mean, you would think, like, he was afraid to put his queen on c2 because of b5. So he's passive even here. Wow. So this time coming into play for both sides now. He's got really good control of these squares. You can't just simply trade pieces and be worse. Um, but you actually won. You actually won it. Wow. So rook d2. You know, interestingly, maybe... <clears throat> Why did he play h4? Did he have to play h4? Maybe h4 was a mistake, but it's it's a little tricky to play. I kind of like this, you know, if he can play queen f1 without making any pawn moves. I mean, I think that truthfully he's better here. Queen f1. This check is not that big a deal. I guess what's the point of king queen f1 if you're going to have to play king g2 anyway, though? Maybe he should just play f3. Yeah, I mean, his play with the queen was weird in this game. But it is a simul. So h4 is kind of weakening, but it looks okay. And then suddenly, ff pawn coming home. And now rook d2 has got to be a mistake. Again, you know, he really has to shore up the light squares around this king, so this this still looks good. I like queen f1. There's no need to play rook d2. Rook d2 puts his rook in an exposed position. He never moved his other rook, he wanted to bring it into the game. But now, yeah, I mean, you've got some stuff. I, I would rather your rook was like on f8. Did you go back to c5? I thought you would play this, heading for e4 again. This actually looks pretty strong. You've got you got knight e4, and you've got the queen coming in here. I think I think he's in trouble. Yeah, I don't like h4 if if we don't have to play it for him. I I could have easily lost the same game with white though here. Oh man, so he missed 97 check and time pressure. Damn. So you straight up blundered. Yeah, instead of queen, queen c6, you should have played here first. This is much stronger. Okay, I guess he has e4, but that that's still a problem. I mean, you have this. You're, you're all over him here. And you've got bishop h6. Well, no. He's got a, yeah, the knight on d5 just keeps coming back to haunt you. You probably need to play king h8 at some point. So this, like, isn't over. Even here. But it does feel like black black has to be better. You're, you're, way, you're way more active now. No, but the game was, like, largely decided by time pressure. He misses 97, check. And then blunders his queen. Yeah, not enough time. You regretted not having traded the knights when you were treated to, to c3. Oh, your knight was on e5. Well, I mean, in general, you have this weakness, static weakness. So, you know, trading pieces kind of leaves them with a favorable ending. I think in general, you don't want to trade pieces. But yeah, maybe if it's going to become that strong... 
we were better off trading it off. Uh, when was that? Here? When was that? Oh, here. Right. Yeah, if you trade here, I mean, it's going to be literally like torture time. The thing is, maybe you get MB5. If you get MB5, you're, you're probably okay. You're okay. It's still better for white, but you're, you're probably holding. He's got a take, and he, you know, you chip away at his grip on the center. I think it's equal, or just a little bit better for white. Alright guys, um, I gotta go to the next game, that is. Alright. Hey, it's Miro. It's it's number six. Hey, it's Miro. All right, what are we what are we doing on time? Eight forty one. Hey, it's Miro. Playing black here, against twenty ninety four. Oh, I'm getting hungry. That's a tasty burger. All right. E four, e five, knight f three, knight c six, bishop c four. Personally. I like bishop c5. I, I, I think like I'd rather play against the the Evans than than the freaking knight g5. You gotta really know this. I mean, and if you really know it, it's okay. Study up on knight g5. Even though it's not like trending right now, um, hey, it's Miro, I think it's important to know what you're doing there. You want to be able to, you know, hold against Hikaru Nakamura when he throws the knight g5 at you. Or Nefidov, or whoever. So d3, bishop c5. c3. And now a5, the trendy early a5. I'm not a fan of it. I mean, I think I like a6 better, whatever. It's a move. Okay. Then white, white here with the a4. He doesn't have to play a4. Um, statistics here are crazy. Look how good the statistics are for black. Like black has a plus score in this position. 147 games. That's pretty disturbing, honestly. Like who's playing these games with white that has a minus score in the in a sort of Joko pianissimo? That's that's just insane. I mean, overall, white's twenty nine to twenty two percent with C three. It's a small sample. There's a hundred and something games, but it's pretty disturbing. A five and suddenly you know, <coughs> but on the on the bad side, the highest rated player is like Glidora. Twenty seventeen. Korobov, Indich. Spassky Boris, 1989, Mikulevsky, you know, so there's a bunch of regular Grandmasters. All right, A4, <clears throat> I don't know if A4 is best, but it's certainly fine. D6, Bishop E3 is a good move, prophylaxis. So Tibiakov versus Jones, 2022. You know, Tibiakov, of course, of of world attack fame. Now he's playing the now he's playing the the Joko. But he was basically playing the Joko in the Royal Lopez anyway. So the world attack is just a Joko. Castles. Yeah, I, I'm not afraid of Bishop G five. You know it's funny how few games there are here. Just ten overall with this exact position. I have no problem with castles. And, you know, okay, bishop g5, Sidonia, Levente's sister played this and beat, uh, 2300, alright, when he plays h3, Tomazzini, I think there was a Tomazzini winery 
near me when I was a kid. Um, Alright, he's like... Where is that guy from? Slovenia? H3, Bishop E6. Yeah, I, I'm not a love. I'm not in love with this move. You know, Bishop E6 in general. It looks like White is starting with doing a, a, you know, Black Lion with White, like Knight D2, G4, Knight F1, like whatever. What what what? Tibikov would probably do is Queen E2, right? And then. You know, also the one good thing is the fact that White has played A4. Probably make him less likely to castle queen side to go like full like Chigorin Steinitz on you and and do some kind of unsound queenie two caveman black lion attack. But I, I would really like to play this position in a way where we don't have to play bishop e6. I mean, you have like almost all of your pawns on dark squares. You know, although I suppose like you still don't have to trade bishops. If he takes here, you know, he's fixing your pawns and, and giving you control of these squares. So, you know, it's up to you whether you want to exchange bishops or not. The only thing is if you play h6, maybe g4, g5 could be a, a, a break. See how, like, someone played h6 here. Petrosaur. But, um, you know, maybe this other move. Cheprinov played knight e7. I mean, I kind of like this. I think I vote for ninety seven. This is like my game with cooking rooks a little bit from our simul game last week, but we don't weaken our pawns. You're gonna go to G six. If he plays G four, he has big fat weaknesses on like F four in particular. D four is too early because you can we can do a lot of stuff. You could take and play like bishop B four check and win a pawn. That's always good. You know, so, yeah, I mean, he, what does he do? Knight on bd2, knight g6, knight c4, and then, yeah, well, now it's, like, a little hard to come up with a move for black. So the knight goes through here, and Chaprinov plays c6. You know, I, I don't know. Tomazini's not on his level, but, um... Maybe ninety three. Like, what should White do? We maybe yeah maybe rookie eight's coming next. I like this man. I I think this is better than Bishop B six. Ninety seven gets my vote. This is not a bad move. Okay, he plays Bishop C two. That's like whew, okay, not a problem. We're not gonna trade light square bishops. Um, white's playing passively. Do we break with d5? There's this problem, right? See, the thing is, you can't have everything. If you play h6, he's got g4 and some kind of crap with g5. But, you know, it's, it's, it's strategically looking kind of unsound. Yeah, the old bishop e6 is always a common occurrence. But usually black has lots of tricks here. Um, in these kind of situations, you can even sacrifice... Normally you just sacrifice the pawn, so there's nothing there. Like, here... And by the way, I had a game the other day where someone played queen c8, but, I mean, this is a little bit better, probably. There are even instances where this works. So, for example, queen b7, bishop b6, and you're done. Because your queen is trapped. Even queen, even queen e8, you know, with the idea of coming out here, is probably fine. And then you're trapping the queen with like rook a7. It's just not really a big deal. Yeah, I mean that that's definitely a major thing, but not not a problem in this particular position yet. <clears throat> but I don't know that white should play bishop c2 either. I'm I'm kind of hoping like black exchanges on b3. So, I think he should just do, like, 92, honestly. 
White should play knight on bd2 and, and head for c4 like Tomazini did, or knight f1. You know, I think like both sides don't really want to exchange on the opponent's terms. Aster big gifted to chance chance yed. Um anyways, here, here. I just don't know what to do here. If d5 black has knight or white has knight g5, which I don't really like. But you know what? Maybe it's just not a big deal. Screw it. We just like bring the bishop back. Just bring the bishop back, I guess. To c8. I mean, I guess he comes back, then he comes back, but then we play h6. Okay, it's a complicated it's a complicated situation. But I mean, eventually white you know, may um, may end up like giving up his center, and if we end up in this kind of situation, uh, here, here, it's possible that black black takes the initiative somehow. I'm not sure, you know, but I don't like rook b8. You know, I don't know what you're doing here with rook b8. This is definitely not appropriate. You need to take some kind of formative action. You know, if anything else, I mean, if nothing else, literally anything else, retreat the bishop back prophylactically. I mean, I guess there's this, you know, this problem. That's another option because of a5. I don't want to get hit by d4 when I'm not expecting it, though. When he castles and plays d4, we lose a piece to the peace fork. So I don't like rook b8. This is a not not the right idea though. I don't see bishop g5, man. GM tranquilizer rating with a party of 16. I can't read. 18. What's up, man? Good to see you. We were just going through the database. There was one of your sister's games with black here. Uh, maybe get your insights on a on a Joko piano position. Levente Vida, Grandmaster from Romania, old friend of mine, um, still alive. That's a good start. That's a good start. I was um, not sure about this, but I think like Bishop G5 is, is sort of artificial for White. I don't like Rook B8, but I think White should get his pieces developed, Knight D2 or Knight A3 here. Not a huge fan of bishop g5, <clears throat> h6, and um, here. However, white is not castled yet. What do we do? Astrobay gifting five, oh my god, five gift subs. Poker Demon, Troll on a Roll, Mr. Rolando, Piano James, Guven Kurt. Astrobe blew his whole bankroll tonight. You're the best, man. Nice to see Levente, though. Thanks for rating the stream. Move 11, gifted a tier 1 sub to Bogachog. Man, Vita Levente, you brought, us, you brought us many gift subs. So what do we play here, guys? What do we play here? I mean, is this like one of those positions where we do like King H8 and Rook G8 and be like Paul Morphy? Height train maybe, 200 bits. Queen E7 is like a normal move. I mean, obviously we've got to consider G5, first and foremost. We're going to consider G5, the most forcing move. G5, Bishop G3 is one thing, but let's look at this. Takes, takes, takes. With the idea of queen f3, it's probably it's probably too slow, right? For white, I don't believe this. I don't think that he's got enough here. Um, I mean, yeah, you can play it, but it doesn't look it doesn't look correct for white. You're playing the standard sort of king g7, queen f3, and um, you know rook rook somewhere like rook h6 or whatever. I don't know. 
I, I'm skeptical of this. If he tries anything, you step aside. You know, with King F8. So G5 is definitely a possibility. But I mean, on the other hand, like White doesn't have sec D, so he can play that. You have to watch D4. And you can't really go knight h5 because of knight tc5. But anyways, it's it's unclear. But I don't think the g5 is the safest way to play. So, but the white white also could come with g4. So I don't know. You know, I mean, this is an interesting move. Let's see what the computer says. I didn't think of d5. Holy shit. That is a cool idea. We're, hype train is close, guys. Two minutes. Sub, gift, or use bits now to start a hype train. We've got a small window of time. Two minutes. d5 is a cool idea. It's like, this doesn't really matter, you know. Bishop takes f6. That, that's not a big deal. We can live with that. Oof. I wouldn't have considered d5 though, but that is a way of maybe you know trying to trade queens. What happens on queen e2? Now we're playing the whirl attack. Tivikov is happy here. That's why he switched. Choo choo. Choo choo hype train. Gina Rook donated 100 bits. My 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 um, Twitch connection is so slow. I don't know if we have a hype train or it left already. I'm usually like really delayed. 95. Oh, 95 is possible? Are you serious? Here. Guys, we're so close to high train. G5, a minute left. Here. 95, 95, there was a problem? Okay, I was, I was freaking out about knight takes c6. I didn't see the queen f6. Two more and it's here. Are you serious? We need two more? I would think one more. Guys, we have less than a minute left. Yeah. Uh, this is cool. Knight h5 works. So he has to play a, a mundane move now. We need to. Trojan style. Yeah, this is like Morphe. But I mean, the one thing you have to be careful of is... Guys, last call for, for bits, your last chance. Someone do need 100 bits. You just have to be careful that d4 doesn't come in. Because then that bishop becomes, you know, a thing. 30 seconds. We always miss the high train by one. The problem is White's development is too much on the back rank. This isn't, you know, he just doesn't have enough development. His queen knight is still on b1, and he's like... Doing the stuff on the king side. That's really exaggerated. White's just too slow here. So anyways. Ten. Nine. Someone donate a hundred bits. It's gone. We missed. That happened the last three times. It's so disappointing. But thank you for your efforts, guys. Bishop h4, g5, you did it. He sacked the piece. You have to take, take. King g7. Queen f3, as expected. And so now I was expecting the rook move. You know, it reminds me of the semi-slav. The rook here. I mean, typically white will play like h4, right? In these style positions. I have seen games where, where black like literally goes king g6. <clears throat> That's tempting fate, isn't it? I don't think that's a good idea, but one can never knows. I don't think it's the safest move. Yeah, I was going to talk about um, rook h6. This is like a semi, uh, semi-slav type theme. We could go rook h6 and then here, and if he takes this, it's no big deal, we're totally safe. So there's like a whole like realm of these peace sacks on g5 and the Joko in Spanish where 
does it work, does it not work, you know, the dark squares, he has no control over dark squares. Okay, so let's see what happened, you went for the center instead. Um, pawn takes d5, bishop takes d5, bishop takes f6, check. Am I missing something? Wow. So you've got counterattack. I think it fails, right? Pawn takes pawn. Yeah, d5 is possible immediately. Um, but I'm concerned about this. Wait, what are we doing here? Check. You've got like some insane move. King g6. You gotta be kidding me if that works. You, you can't even be serious if this is like a move. There's this, 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 and I have, you know, no clue what's going on. I figured this is what Hayes Mirror was thinking. But at the end of the day, um, it's still not 100% clear. I assume black is better. I guess it's a safe assumption, but a little messy. Um, I guess I'll take my chances there, though. So, here. White did not play um, Pawn Takes Pawn. He played Knight D2, and now D4. But, dude, can't you just play, like, Bishop E7 here? Oh, maybe you want to move your rook so you have F8 hiding square. Maybe it's not a big deal, but I guess this is the safest approach, huh? Bishop e7. I think here we're, we're secure. I mean, after queen g3, I don't know. Do we have knight h5? Bishop e7, knight g3, bishop d8, knight h1. The knight is trapped. Perhaps. Hypothetically. We're up a rook. So that's good. Um, I guess that's one of the main points in playing d5. You didn't want to trade and get 94. No, I agree. I'm afraid of 94. But I mean, I think like this, you know, this is clearly... Uh, a solid move, no? It's too late for that. Like, trading, you're just, you're just fine. You can take with the bishop or the queen here. Actually, you can take with anything. He's lucky if he has some kind of perpetual check with queen g3. This just looks kind of time-consuming. My only issue with d4. I, I thought maybe knight, knight f1, knight g3, knight h5. But it's slow. But what else is he gonna do? You know, Queen G three. It's unbelievable that he castled here. You don't get much time to make a hype train. Why not five minutes? I don't know. Is that my setting? Do I control the time limit? I know I can control like how many like donations it takes to reach the hype train. But I don't remember if that was if that was a, a setting that the streamer can can modify. I guess knight f1. Peter doesn't like it though. So if here, it's just too slow. Everything's too slow. I assumed it was a universal thing. But I remember that there you know you can modify the number of donations, on your own. You think it is? All right, we can look into it. Now you're just solidly, you're solidly winning. This guy. Oh, he doesn't have queen g3. I mean, or queen f4. It's over. Yeah, I mean, white just lost now. Knight, not so easy, I guess, but um, 
Ninety-seven feels kind of passive. It, it is scary having no no pawns around our king side. Maybe it's not so simple, huh? Where where did all of our like pawns go? Wow. But rather than knight d7, maybe we can play more actively. I, I'm feeling it like knight h5, maybe. Okay, the situation is kind of crazy. I mean, he might even be able to play f4. I, I'm not 100% sure what's going on here. Winning according to the computer, but it would be a little awkward in over the board or like a time pressure situation. Lady seven seems a tiny bit passive. Sack on uh, e five. Anyone? F four. Hmm. You had that move. C5, not sure. White's starting to like triple, triple lies on the, on the seventh rank. You've got the equal amount of time here, but C5, I don't know. I don't know what to do. I'm, I'm thinking about b5. Man. Alright, it just saves the pawn. This is getting kind of scary. You have time to trade off one of his rooks very well. Check here. Take, take. Oh no. Take, take, take. Rook behind the pawn. And then g4. Are you kidding me? Like this is this is a draw. How fast can we get these pawns going? It's too slow. That's a nice move. He had some technique here. Do we have any tricks like B five? B five takes A four B six. Rook c4, b7, rook b3, too slow. This guy has decent endgame technique. Oh, you're going for the two connectors? He has two connectors as well. My assumption would be this would be a draw. I mean, I want to go back to c5 and say, like, that was inflexible, um, but it's a long way back. Here, takes, here, takes, rook c7, and g4. A very strong move, like cutting your king off. You just don't have a choice here. And then another good move. b5 right away, takes, a4. This isn't good enough, right? Like b6 here, rook c2. No, no, we have no chance. This, this stupid a-pawn and the, and the broken pawns that are blocked. He's immobilized your queenside majority with one pawn. Triple eyes? Triple size. Triple eyes? We can triple eyes. It's a bushism. C4, rook d2, c3, rook c2, f5. Yeah, objectively, um, maybe this was a mistake. You wanted to fix his pawn, but... Can we play rook c4 first? Is that what Gina rook was talking about? So presumably f5 check, king g5, king up. No, this, this is not that simple. I think like white's in some big trouble here. Maybe you should play king f2. I have the feeling that black's winning here here, here, this is a better, better version, 
So like rook c4 immediately should have been played rather than than f5. That gave the time for the king to come up and defend. Now I am not sure I figure it's a draw. I had a nightmare game I lost with, with two connectors against two connectors two months ago. But his pawns are actually further advanced than yours. This is a freaking nightmare. You might even be losing. It seems like you're slower than he is. Draw is kind of unlikely at this point. Oh my god. Check. So that's bad technique. I mean, I guess he should check you back. But maybe it doesn't matter. Let's say king, king f8. Where do you go? King f8. You're better. Wow. I, I can't believe you were better here. Yeah, he's better. <clears throat> he's actually winning after f5. That's how tight this is. Wow. King g4 blunder. He's only slightly better. a4. And now king f5 is the blunder, getting in the way of his own pawn. Wow. They misunderestimated me. Oh my god. I can't believe someone actually said that. That's worse than me. So rook a4, rook f6 check. Yeah, he's bottled himself up. Wow. He butchered this ending. How could you butcher this ending that bad? Unbelievable. You're queening first. Well, you're certainly not losing. The question is, are you winning? I would advocate a check here. And another check. Oof. Did he have to go to f6? If g5, he loses his queen on the check. Same thing on g4. That leaves us with e5. King e5. Which is horrible too. So I guess he's just lost. Pretty funny. Yeah. Good game, man. It was a tough battle. Alright, we've got just a couple games left. Um, Poo11 versus Turd Gustafson, a.k.a. Move11. And, by the way, there's no relation between Poo11 and Turd Gustafson. Also, no relation between Poo11 and T-Boot Poo. There's poo on your boot. Um... A lot of poo in the last two games. Number seven. Boot poo. Poo on your boot. E5. Don't come to Budapest like you unless you like poo on your boot because there's a lot of dog shit here. Hungarians love their dogs and you can expect to run into some droppings always look down when you're you're walking down the street in Budapest at least in my in my district okay we got c3 Sicilian knight d5 d4 c takes d4 c takes d4 so okay c takes d4 is not main line right knight f3 is main line what is the time control here it's 6 plus 5 no what is that 300 divided by six that's five okay wait 300 yeah six minutes five minutes whatever so d6 at least this dogs are not people power things in Harrisburg man there's people too if you find the right you know you find the right neighborhood near the Calati if you really are looking for that kind of thing. 
um, the underpass or the overpass near the Kelly station you can probably if that's what you're into um, all right knight f3 knight c6 main line bishop c4 and then I fell out of my chair when my opponent played this wow this reminds me of something oh my god this reminds me of something I looked at yesterday Man, why do I not know this variation? Like, normally... Um... We're playing knight b6. Bishop b5, then take. Right? So, move 11 has the, um, the immediate take which I forget. Bishop takes d5. And I never looked at this line. Especially kind of Shirov, 2013. They're both experts. Is Kelly the place where guys play Blitz for money using a doubling cube? That was the Nugati, right? Like, they used to play chess in the underground at Nugati Station. They, they, that place is even worse than it used to be, but there's no one playing chess. They, like, cleaned the chess players out of there. That, that doesn't exist anymore. Um, no, it's a, the other station. The East Station. Right, no, that's the Nugati. This, this is the other one. The, one of the other main ones. Queen takes d5. Yeah, I would just like fall out of my chair if someone played bishop takes d5. What is the position I was thinking of? Something similar I saw today, or the other day. E4, E5? It had to be an E4, E5. Knight F3. Ah, I'm never going to remember it. Never mind. So, so you're, you're giving up your good bishop here with white, like mortal sin. Queen takes D5. And then obviously that's not a move. So Pooh is playing like Pooh. Like obviously the point is nice C3. Man, I don't know, for whatever reason, I never found I never like seen this line. I guess I never considered playing D takes C5. The few times that I've played this line with black, I always played knight B6. I, I take it back. I've actually played e6 before. In fact, Vital Levante was here on the stream, and I probably played e6 against him. Nah, we, we threw your game out, B Jock. Just kidding. Yeah, of course. I've played both, knight b6 and, D and, and e6 here. Yeah, this is just horrible. So what's the final analysis of this? Default. Black's a little behind in development. Well, White gave up his golden bishop. Queen d6, apparently. You know, my intuition would be like queen d8, but I guess... One little mistake and you're in trouble. Damn. You literally have to play queen d6. And now d5. I just, I'm still surprised. I never saw this line. You're, you're literally forced down a very narrow bridge here. Takes, takes. Queen takes d4. E5. I guess black's okay. So at the end of the day, you know, the truth is bishop takes d5 just isn't a good move. No, I've seen this line. Kasparov talks about this line in um, Revolution in the 70s. 
But I don't remember, you know, noticing analysis of Bishop takes d5. I don't think he gave it much thought. <clears throat> yeah, Sveshnikov played it for white. <coughs> but all the games were like d takes e, exactly. Kasparov talks about this variation here. I mean, he gives an example game of something like this. I didn't realize like Bishop takes d5 was a thing. But it it's not, not a big deal. Like the whole line is... Is it is I guess contingent on this? Is there any other option for white? Knight takes e five is interesting. So this is also a line, but lots of draws. Vital Levente is a big expert on a c three Sicilian, but he he may have given up playing it because he just was was played it to death. Um, so d takes e5, bishop takes d5, queen d5, and then what? It's like the worst move ever. I'm gonna go into an ending, lose my right to castle, and let you, like, have the bishop pair with the weak pawn overextended on e5. Damn. So here it's like a tough call. I mean, you've got bishop g4 or bishop f5, both of which look very strong. Both of which are strong. But, all right. Thanks for a nice, simple game for us, move 11. Now, g6 creative. You know, if you really want to be, like, funky here, you probably try g5. g6 was a mouse slip. And then the, the awful h3. I guess I'll have to take... He doesn't take, though. I like taking. I mean, I think you've got a winning position. The question is, maybe you have to play... Um, no, you have a winning position here. No? Takes, takes, bishop g7. He can't play e6. He has to play rook e1. Then you're like, castle, queenside, check. What is white going to do? There's no way white's defending this position. Turd Ferguson. That's funny. You call him Turd Ferguson. Yeah, he is a subscriber. You haven't played Turd Ferguson? Alright. Bishop e6. He loved his bishop so much, he like put it back on e6. Obviously casting queenside also possible. Check. Knight b4. And highly recommend maybe 91 here, although it's not overly pretty. You might want to consider it. Right. No, it must have come from that, Mr. Coffee. He must have got it from Norm MacDonald. Bishop H6 check. Whoops. That's not good. Check. All right. Comedic, brutal beatdown from move 11. And then t bot Poo versus Cheesy Noob, last game. Did we lose on time? I was predicting this matchup, actually, early in our Tuesday stream. Guys, we'll be back tomorrow. We'll see you all then. This is our last game for today. D4. No. D4, C6. D4, D5. Okay, so two Cairo Khan players, although, you know, I don't think the cheesy noob really plays theory. He just kind of makes stuff up. It's funny, though. I saw the same variation this week against uh, one of my uh, potential students who I had a first lesson with um, played the same line, oddly enough. Except his opponent played knight f3. I mean, bishop f4 is better. I don't know why anyone would choose to play knight f3. In the game I looked at earlier this week, it was like knight f3, g6. And I said to him, Tom Bartell did a series, I think, for for the Karo Khan on... Maybe he did something on... On that... The, what is that? What is the name of that website where they have chess, chess analysis? Um, I can't remember it now. 
But um, I like kind of like think Bishop F5 is sort of interesting. Why not? But T. Pooh Bot knows, knows this is the right move. Bishop F4 and then G6. And this is, you know, G6 is, it's it's not great, but it's solid. Charlie Hurtan used to play this. Um, he was a Karakon lover. I, I think that um, maybe our move order is important. Maybe we don't rush with Knight F3. If you play knight e2 and black tries like bishop f5, you can try crazy shit like g4. But I guess there's no time to get it in though. If only I had time to play like h3 and g4. Wow, Michael Basman with black, 1977. e6, g4. No one, no one dared to play g4 here. How is it? Unclear. Now I swear there was like a Kamsky game that went along the line. Almost the same position. But Gata's game was with white, it was slightly different. But you see how this is very close to Gata, because it's it's a it's like a London system essentially. It could be a London system actually. But if black can play bishop f5, you know, that's an alternative. So black played g6 and and you played h3, but h3, you know, h3 feels kind of unnecessary for me. This is horrible. Queen c2. My god, what is that? It's like a noob move. Speaking of cheesy noob, knight d2. Alright, so if we play knight d2... Black plays bishop f5, we take, black takes, you're supposed to play this apparently, and then e6, maybe we'll get in g4 later, knight e5, maybe this was how it went, is there a Kamsky game here? No. No Kamsky game. You won blitz over the board. 3 2 tourney, 9 out of 11, 8 wins, 2 draws, 1 loss. Congratulations! Nice job! Unsurprising. Alright, so h3 is kind of slow, but it's okay. I I think like that's, that's actually a nice idea. You give yourself the g4 thing. In fact, maybe that works here. Maybe that's what I'm thinking of. This is a thing? You have g4? Still no one played g4. I'm obsessed with g4. It's sharp. Okay, black's not committed to castling, you know, so it's not like it's that dangerous. You're playing like Richard Rockport. Safer to play knight f3. So what did you do? Bishop, Black didn't do bishop f5. Bishop g7. Oh, I thought it was funny when you ended up with with him having two bishops, because he hates bishops. Right. Castles, knight on bd2. Well, I mean, this... Yeah, this... Not castling makes g4 still a thing. So he doesn't understand the idea of playing bishop f5, but again, we'll try one last time and see if we can find it. g4. Nope. Wrong game. But it's an interesting plan. You can castle queenside and just pretend you're playing the London system. Take care, Mr. Coffee. Alright, knight on bd2, rook e8. I don't love rook e8, but apparently it's a move. I would probably go with... Um, something else here. The bishop f5. Looks like knight h5 is a move. Not really sure what it does, though. Oh, what are we going to do? Bishop h6? Oh, I saw a game really like this. Actually. Yeah, it's like a Yermo anti-London thing. You play... You, 
You play knight, knight f4. Play for knight f4. That's an interesting idea as well. Rook e8. Knight e5 immediately. Of course, it's not necessary to play knight e5 immediately. And then you took with the pawn. Yeah, f65. It's a thing. But of course, if you do that, you've got to be careful your knight isn't isn't trapped with like g4 on h5. Yeah, I mean, clearly f6 and e5 is a central plan in the queen's gambit. And this is a queen's gambit exchange variation with reverse colors. But I, you know, I think everyone is expecting bishop takes e5 here. And you played pawn takes. And it's actually stronger than it, it appears. Objects in the mirror are larger than they appear. Um, knight d7, knight f3. Yeah, that was a good judgment by you. I mean, you have a nice space advantage now. Very Rubensteinian. Castles, e6. You know, it, it, you think of, like, Nimzovich, but actually it reminds me more of a Rubenstein game. Rook e1, bishop e7, and then the blockade of the square. He can sack a pawn with, like, d4. So I think you should probably play this immediately, you know, not allowing d4 under any any case. Right, right. Mozart is probably right. He was just expecting, like, bishop takes e5. But he probably has a better way to play it. If he plays ninety seven, <clears throat> it's like a Grunfeld. It reminds me of a Grunfeld. Black's probably okay. Mm, queen e two. Maybe you can play queen e two. <clears throat> Magnus. It's Magnus style. It's the London system, right? You got a nice position here. Maybe Black should think about sacking a pawn, huh? The people are just too materialistic. I mean, obviously... This is like your last chance, bro. I mean, maybe... Maybe it's worth considering, seriously. Queen c7. And again, now, actually, this move does stop does stop you from, from playing knight d4. Queen c7 is okay. Oh, shit. Nim's a bitch. So much for black getting in d4 or e5. And now you blockaded. And now it's straight up strategic win for white. The full good knight versus bad bishop. Oof. <clears throat> yeah, really overprotect but how do we break through yeah I mean I don't really want to play f4 I'd really like to do this without playing f4 if I could so can we play for example bishop g5 with the idea of here. Yes, winning. Strategically winning. He has bishop g7, bishop f6. And I guess, you know, you're threatening this, and it's a dark square overload. I did a video of Michael Adams versus Bolagon on my YouTube channel years ago. One of the few like non streaming videos on my channel where Michael like beat Bolagon really badly in a Gurganidza Karakan, basically same thing. You know, dark square domination and black had a bad bishop. Very nice, but you lost on time. 
It's the principle of the thing. You had a winning position here. I don't know about f4. I like bishop g5. Not not obstructing my piece play. No, the computer might like f4 though. Computer wants to play b4. Oh, that's that's kind of perverse. It's unnecessary. H4, also very strong move here later on. Pretty much any move that's a dark square move. I mean, okay, like this does allow him to play bishop g7. But if you realize like he can't possibly take the exchange here, then it's just, it's a matter of time till you break through on the king side. Okay, guys, I got to go. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for your support and almost hype train. Thanks, Mr. Coffee. I know he left already. We're going to be back tomorrow. Thanks for all your games. Gina Rooks. Gina Rooks. Gina Rook, thanks for the 100 bits. And Mozart for the analysis. Very bad French, in fact. Um, yeah, I didn't consider B4 either. It's a nice uh, restricting move. But rare to see Cheesy Noob like, with bishops. I think he does know how to play with bishops. All right, everybody, thank you. We'll see you again tomorrow morning. Bye. Bye.